working towards each other. TP comes in. Warlock ulti will initiate this fight. And the Sand King channeling his epicenter. Jumps in. Beautiful ulti. Plus the Lich Blast. Onto many. Luna comes in. And they just go to town. Three dead for Rays. And Night Sub will be the sacrificial lamb. He tries to TP out. Will he make it out alive? He will. Sand King stun didn't have enough mana. But as I said, that beautiful Blink Dagger picked up by Sand King. Turned that fight around. Got a huge stun onto the Golem. And onto three heroes, I believe. In combination with that Lich ulti, just cleaned up many heroes. And now we actually have a pause. And Razor needs to reset. Beautiful fight. 13 to 8 right now. Winx Gaming leading. Especially after that last fight. And I know I've done this about 50 times now. That's alright. Let's take another look. In favour of Winx Gaming. Over 3k in terms of XP. And for the gold as well. Over 1,000. And, um... Let's use this pause right now to go through some stats, find out the actual, uh, the real reasons behind these fights going the way of, uh, going the way of Winks and the farm and things like that. So let's head over to the kills. Jug's leading on the board, 4-1. and one. Um, if I head over to where Juggernaut actually is, is he going for that Ag Scepter build? Yes, he is, and now he's going for that Maelstrom, looking towards that Miolina, so that when he comes out of his ulti form, his attack speed's going to be phenomenal, and he's just going to clean up. Uh, with a couple of lucky crits, and I really like these custom pictures that he's got. That's actually a really nice picture. Uh, whatever you call it, it looks really nice, uh, that's all I have to say. And especially with his healing ward too. I've never actually had a custom healing ward, I wish I did. I love Juggernaut, I love the hero, but unfortunately I don't, and I am very jealous. Uh, <laughs> moving on now, last hits. Mm, surprise, surprise. Well, I'm not really surprised. Anti-Mage is going to be leading with 166 CS. And actually, look at the lack of denies as well. I think teams really, really need to utilize these denies because they're actually such a big deal. The most amount of denies is coming from Razor. And that actually helped him survive the mid lane, even from the amount of help he was getting from Tree and Protector and from the amount of damage he was taking from that passive of Necrophos. Uh, the denies really actually kept him close in terms of levels. So well played by him, and just imagine the difference if all the other heroes actually denied as much as they could, especially on this tri lane. Luna would be a, a little bit further behind in terms of levels, and may even be the same level as a couple of the heroes in that tri lane, even though he was in a dual lane. That's actually the, the impact that he could have if he uh, focused on denies a little bit more. And the stream's actually gone offline for some reason. Not really sure why. I'm not really sure why the stream's going off. It says it's still working for me. A little bit surprised right now. Uh, it says it's live right now. It looks like it's coming back up. Not really sure. Keeping an eye on it. If it's not working, I'll try and get it fixed. It might take a few minutes out of this game, but I'm sure that'll be alright. And there we go. Stream's back up. I'll give a little message to those watching on the stream right now. Hopefully that uh, evens things just a little bit. And we will have an unpause now. Anti-Mage picks up the bounty rune. There's a haste rune bot if anyone wants to pick it up. Well, looks like no one will. There we go. And uh, looking further again into the stats, let's go hero level Necrophos still leading in terms of XP. He's doing really well right now. Sitting at level 15 where the support's are level 9. That's actually a really big... Really big change. Really big difference in levels. And wow. Necrophos is literally the lead farmer in this entire game. He's got more XP per minute than the Anti-Mage. And what's actually... He's only 1-0. and oh. He's got 9 assists, but... How is he racking so much XP? Current gold. Rays are going to be leading. It looks like he's going for that BKB. He's almost got enough. I think he's going for that Mithril Hammer. If he hasn't got that already... But of course, net worth going to be in favor of Anti-Mage. That, was, that wasn't that was a surprise in the end. And Jug's going to be coming in for the Anti-Mage. He had ultimate and there were no creeps. He definitely could have gone for that right now. Uh, sorry for all those back on the stream. Hopefully it's working out now and it's sounding very nice. Very clear, very concise. And uh, let's head on back into this game if you're just joining back again. So there's going to be a push top. TP's going to come in from Razor. 
They're going to chow down on this tower, and let's see if any retaliation comes out from Ray's Gaming. They've got a couple of heroes in the back lines. They're going to be leading in Warlock's Invis uh, from the Tree and Protector, and if he can get a good ultimate off or a slow, he should be all right. Jug's actually in a lot of trouble right now. Luna's going to TP out. He's saying, good luck, buddy. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Jug actually pops the ultimate quite early. He wants to see what he can do. Mech is popped. And uh, pops the healing ward. He's got a magic wand. Sand King's actually... And a beautiful ulti from the train protector will cancel Sand King's ulti. What a play done there. Anti-Mage picks up the kill on Juggernaut. Sand King blinks out. Now Necrophos. Lich is being chased down. Necrophos should TP out now. He should be okay. He'll get out. And wow, train protector. Charlie's life advice. Using that small cooldown ulti that works in such a large radius to absolute work. Cancels that Sand King ultimate, which could have actually turned around that whole fight because all five heroes from Ray's Gaming were actually very grouped up. So well done by him. Uh, just showing how important the supports are, especially with correct use of their abilities. And uh, let's take a look at a bit of warding going on now. Ray's ga uh, Winx Gaming actually putting a couple of defensive wards down. This one here. Not really showing that they want to be aggressive at all, more like they want to spot incoming ganks from this direction. Or actually down here as well, for the anti mage who most likely will be farming in this area. So that's a nice ward to have picked up, but... Uh, also, they've got a couple of rune wards, they will collide, no de-warding is actually going to happen. They've got another one on this cliff too. Yeah, not seeing much de-warding. That's alright. Vision isn't that important anyway. <coughs> That actually is very important. Don't listen to me. Um, <laughs> now going mid lane, Sand King. He's got Blink. He's got Barra Strike. Do they make one? Do they want to make a play onto this Anti Mage? No, they will not. He goes to farm the creeps, and Lich will collide with him there. Just saying hello. How you doing? Having a good day? How's work? We'll uh, exchange a conversation of damage. And Anti Mage farming the enemy jungle. Doesn't want to waste time on farming. He's got that Manta. Now going for an MKB, I believe. Which is actually a pretty nice pickup. Because I think he can tell that Luna will be going for a Butterfly fairly soon. Maybe Juggernaut as well will be looking towards that Butterfly after that Miolina. So nice play by him. And uh, anti Major also. Basha is a very standard item on anti Major It's something you want, you want to pick up. And it's also very strong against... Luna especially, and Juggernaut as well, because they're generally heroes that when you play, uh, you'd pick up a BKB. Not so much Juggernaut, because he does have the spin, but you can still pick up a BKB on anti uh, on Juggernaut, because you're only magically immune during the spin, and you want to be magically immune while you're right-clicking down on enemies, so I still think BKB is a viable option. But then again, the Bash is just going to do... A first hit Bash! Very nice play. Juggernaut ult is right now. He's got Aghanims. But Anti-Mage will blink out of that. He's got ulti. Does he have ulti? If he just blinked ahead and mana voided, he could have gotten a kill there. He probably didn't have the vision, so that's unfortunate. And now it looks like they're pushing down this mid lane. Warlock going to be putting down the Fatal Bonds onto the Creep Wave. Will demolish them quite fast. And the Creeps will now push down the mid lane with extra speed due to the uh, Curse of Avernus. There we go. Pronounced it correctly. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Anti Mage still hitting up the jungle. Two Mantas coming out for both sides right now. Luna picks up hers and uh, also Anti Mage has his. Nice plays by both teams. Good pickups. Very standard pickups, but also very, very important, which I think is actually uh, not thought about as much. And now they're going to scout out Roche with the healing ward. Very nice use of that ability, but it does have a pretty high cooldown, I believe. 52 seconds at the moment. So 60 second cooldown on that healing ward. So if there's a fight. They're not going to be getting that uh, HP region that they need. And Luna's sitting right at the front. They've actually got no sentry wards down, and she's fully invis. No sentries on anyone? No, nothing. Baden, he's actually gone for an S and Y. He hasn't gone for any sentries of sorts. The supports don't have anything either, so they wouldn't actually scout her out in the end. She picks up the uh, bounty rune, and looks like she'll back off. Doesn't really want to fight there. And we'll start uh, farming the top lane, and maybe look towards her next big item. For the next fight, which should most likely be a BKB. And looking at Razor, yep, he's finished his BKB now. He's got his mechanism still. Power Tread's ready. He's ready to fight. He's got level 2 ultimate. He's level 14, getting close to that level 16 milestone. 
where he will have that even more powerful uh, level 3 ultimate up and available. And Juggernaut's playing a little bit of a rat style. I remembered when there was a big clash going down in this area, he's just pushing the top lane. Not really sure why my map just did that, but you guys know what I mean. He's pushing where the Luna is on the top lane. And now as soon as the TP's come, he's uh, got a TP ready, so he can just spin TP if he needs to. Not against that chain though, that static link, that's going to be a bit painful. And I think Razor knows where Juggernaut is, but he'll get out very quickly. And there'll be no fights going on there. Meanwhile, top lane, Anti-Mage, Mantis and all battling it out. Luna pops the ulti, this is carry versus carry right now. Anti-Mage kites so hard and TPs out. And then the slow also from Train Protector will be okay. And now do they want to get a Mana Void to cancel this TP? Can he blink in? You gotta, you gotta use that blink. I guess he was afraid that he might get counter-initiated on by the Luna, so he wanted to play it safe and just run in there while he was still invisible. But a couple of opportunities wasted where he could have picked up a kill on a really big pickup, especially the Luna. So they could have gotten big kills on those carries, but unfortunately they do not. 34 minutes in, not much going on now. Not a very high kill score. It's only 13 to 10 right now. Winx Gaming will be leading. Taking a look at the graphs, over 2,500 heading towards that 5,000 mark. Uh, uh, in a lead of XP for Winx and looking also at net worth. Just over the zero mark, heading towards the 250-300 uh, in favour of Winx as well. And the train protector will DC. And there will be a pause from the Razor, and now we are expected to wait. And guys, uh, you may be looking for some deep insight right now, some statistics, some words of wisdom, you know, something to really enlighten your minds in terms of Dota and strategy and all this really, really uh, nice, a really nice conversation and enlightening, you know, all this voodoo crazy stuff, but actually kind of gone through a little bit and I haven't really gone into that much detail so there won't be that much for me during this pause and actually it won't be that long anyway so no water slash cookie break for me unfortunately <laughs> Trent will come back into the game and now we will unpause and continue on with this semi-final game game two Wings first raise gaming and the unpause will come out What's Train Protector going for now? We actually... Huh. So two urns. Very effective. Now, if you do not know this, when a hero dies within that range, let me just take a look at it right now, dies within that 1,400 units of you, the actual urn charge only goes to the closest urn, so both heroes can't actually pick up an urn charge. Bit of a misplay. Now they'll smoke up, heading on behind, and here we go, it should be a big clash, they're going for this tower. Juggernaut's going to get right clicked down, and they're going for this Luna as well in the back lines, but it looks like they'll leave her in the end. They pick off the Juggernaut, and the Mana Void will cancel the TP, and they'll pick up two. Well played, well played, well played by Ray's Gaming. A little bit surprised at that, uh, you know, when you generally when you see five heroes missing on the map, and the, the last time you saw them was with your wards in kind of this vicinity. You kind of expect that they're probably looking to fight you. And now, uh, Rage Gaming will take uh, advantage of their slight dire advantage and the fact that they got a couple of kills on the two carries to now take down Roshan, who's wearing a really nice uh, Christmas hat. I actually love this little update. Let's just zoom in right up close. Look at him. Oh, well, he actually died, so we can't actually see him anymore. And they, sh they picked up the ward as well. That's very nice. Aegis goes to Anti-Mage. He's farming quite well. He's now got the Aegis plus a Basher going for that heart. Now he has the recipe. Now just needs that point booster. And he's going to be almost unstoppable. But um, well, he's actually not going to be that unstoppable in the end. Because he didn't actually go for a butterfly this game. Which I'm quite surprised with the right-clicking potential of actually the Juggernaut and the Luna. You know, you'll need to be evading some of those attacks, and that could actually win you fights. And with that said, going for a heart doesn't actually help you that much against Necrophos, because it's percentage... It's not really percentage-based damage. It is on his passive, but his ultimate's also to do with the amount of damage that you've taken, so... I'm really questioning this builder now. The fight will come out. Sanking blinks into the fight. Stuns on one, picks up that Warlock, but meanwhile, further down the fight, 
BKBs and all will be deployed. Juggernaut's ulti just doing work. We'll take down the Razor right now. Luna as well will drop two down for Wings Gaming. The spin as well. Beautiful tree and ulti will fly. Necrophos being chased down. And Anti-Mage extremely no low right now. Aegis will pop. They've only lost one for three. Juggernaut being chased down now. Uh, his spin's on cooldown. Six seconds remaining. And now they're going to take advantage of this. And this may even be Rax. Luna's down for 40. Uh, Sanking's down for 30. And... During that time, they've actually got the damage. Manta's up right now, so they could definitely look to push this tower. Necrophos trying to do what he can to defend. Pops the Death Pulse, but that's not really going to do that much in the end. And now we've got more heroes heading in. Warlock. Kind of looks like he's building a Vlad's right now, but I wouldn't like to believe so. And they're really focusing a lot on this tower. Necrophos pops the ulti when Anti-Mage takes some damage, and he just gets destroyed. That's an Aghanim's ulti as well. He's down for 103 seconds. Ray's gaming have to get out right now. He can't even buy it back. This is a huge milestone. Sanking blinks in, misses the stun just, and now they're trying to TP out. <coughs> Sorry about that. And Juggernaut will clean up Train Protector with his ultimate. And Anti Mage, I told you, that hard pickup just not really helping him out there against Necrophos and his really nice ulti, so. I think there was a little bit of a misplay with that item choice. He probably wanted to get that actually, uh, the butterfly going because he can also evade tower damage. And the tower damage from this tower here is actually what put him low enough to be cleaned up by Necrophos in that last fight. So, uh, that's pretty annoying, but you know, you can't control everything. And now here, both teams trying to do what they can. Ray's trying to defend for the time being. Anti Mage is still down for another 43 seconds. And they'll probably pick up this mid-tier 2. Which, yeah, they will. It's going to drop. Doesn't get denied. Luna uh, Luna gets the last hit. Even better. She's doing really well. And they also pick up another tier 2 bot. So a 400 gold. 400 gold given to all players of Winx Gaming. They're leading by a lot. Now Night Sub takes down that healing ward. But Jug just hits so damn hard. He tries to spin. But the static link does not break at this point. Razor is stealing so much damage. He's got 112 damage right now. He's trying to pick up a kill. He's going for the Juggernaut, hitting so hard, and he's just standing still and will probably die. He dies. The Sand King drops as well. Two down. But meanwhile, mid lane, the racks are just being destroyed. They were chasing kills, and instead of chasing kills, Winx Gaming have their priorities straight, and they were going for objectives. And now there'll be a big clash in the mid lane. All the carries going to work. Luna's got mo no mana. She'll drop as well. Necrophos not as tanky when he's being focused by five heroes. And it's a five-man wipe right now. But they do pick up one Rax, and that's definitely not worth it in the end. Pick up the melee Rax. That's pretty awesome. The range Rax, seeing it at half health, does not regen. Uh, let's check out the buyback status, actually, if I can click on that. Buyback status, looking at it now. Necrophos does have buyback ready. Luna also, if she wants to pop it, Sanking and Lich too. So they should be okay to defend if they have to. Two buybacks come out already. And it looks like they still want to commit to this push. Anti-Mage is sitting pretty big right now. He's very well farmed. Sitting at, he's level 19 right now, and he's got over almost 300 CS. Looks like they could take an engagement right now, but it looks like they'll back off. Night Sub, TP's out. He wants to defend the top lane. Anti-Mage will head back to the jungle. And guys, is this not... Uh, is this not what I said at the start of the game? I mean, you know, the lineups that were picked up were very passive. They were all about defending themselves and waiting for the later portions of the game before they come alive. And they did so. And actually, I know why the stream is lagging. I'll fix that right now for you all. Just give me one second. Sorry about that. Still getting new to this whole thing. I'm just one man. If you'd call me a man, I'm not really sure what you'd call me, but I'm just one human being. And Juggernaut will be getting <laughs> very harshly right-clicked down by Anti-Mage. He's lost all of his mana, and he's got Blink if he needs to. And the Mana Void just cleans him up. Necrophos pops the mech, and also the Death Pulse. It might even drop as well. Sanking comes in, gets the stun, and he gets hexed up as well. But he's just not taking any damage. He's too tank. Without the uh, Lunar around and without the Juggernaut actually going for the kill, instead of trying to run away, they can't actually do sufficient damage to this Anti-Mage. And look at the aggressive warding now coming out from Ray's Gaming. They know that they can take fights because they've got an Anti-Mage who's well ahead. 
uh, at the moment of the Luna, fair to say. Luna actually does not have that much farm at all. She did go off to the off lane. So she's going to have a hard time. Anti-Mage Anti -Mage is really fat now. Looks like they're going to go for the high ground now. They've got the wards to support it. They've got the vision. What are they going to do right now? How is Winks going to react uh, to the current situation that they are in? Manta will be popped. Anti-Mage thinks he's pulling a Terror Blade right now, but he doesn't actually have that butterfly to uh, evade attacks, so his illusions will get cleaned up quite fast. Razor pushing the bot lane. They've actually taken this tier f uh, this tier three bot, so if they want to angle it to pick up a Rax, they can most likely go for this bot lane if they choose to. But it looks like they won't. They're all spread out over the map. Warlock not going to stack the ancients. Now pinging out anti mage Necrophos uh, in particular. Looks like they really want to try and get a kill on him. Necrophos is sitting in the back lines. May want to wrap around, but no, he'll leave him alone. And both teams will eventually disperse to their own sides of the map. Let's take a look at a couple of things right now. Kills, deaths, assists. Juggernaut is now leading on the charts. He's doing really well. That ultimate really just proving to be a really big impact in these fights. And looking at last hits, wow. Anti-Mage is really clearing ahead, seeing at 330 CS uh, at this current time. He's doing amazing. Level 21 as well. XP per minute now above the Necrophos. He's doing great. Current gold, he's got 4k in the bank on top of all his items and seeing at 23k net worth. What is going to be the reply from Winx? It looks like they just want to death bowl and uh, claim the second racks, but if they go for a fight, they're going to have a bit of a hard time. Anti-Mage is sitting back, they've got Glyph available if they choose to use it. And meanwhile, a Hex comes out, two drop already for Raze Gaming. BKBs get popped, the Lich ult is going to fly. Bounces through a few heroes and Sanking tried to get the blink epicenter, but that didn't work out in the end, and Razor will drop as well, three down for Raze, they're actually doing it, Night Sub, has he still got ultimate available, yes, no he doesn't, he'll drop as well, the beautiful Necrophos ulti, he's down for 105, second lane of Rax, and looks like they may just want to go for GG, where was Anti-Mage this whole time, and he just gets melted, that butterfly pickup, really, really having a bad impact right, bad impact right now, ultra kill for Juggernaut, I uh, can't pronounce his name still. I'm not going to attempt it. They're cleaning out these tier fours. And what's the buyback status? No buyback for the Razor. No buyback for the Warlock or the Train Protector. And now Anti-Mage buys back and he's going back in. But they go for the Ancient and GG's the call. Ugh, why? Just he really needed that butterfly that game, I think. I think that would have helped them out in so many ways. But I'll call the GG for them. Winks will be proceeding to the final, so come on and join me down. Thanks for watching. Sorry about a couple of the issues on stream. Uh, my name is Arctic Dota, and there'll be a best of five coming soon for the grand final of the hunt. So come down and join me there, and hopefully we'll uh, watch a great series of games. Thank you very much, everyone.